So today we are looking at um, aborting on believing attitudes. To succeed in life, career, and business, you have to abort that unbelieving attitude. And let me start by sharing with you guys a story. The first time that I spoke or I trained in the US in a, bus in a business workshop here in the US, um, something happened, you know, whether we like it or not, people always have this stereotype, how they look at people. So when they introduced me um, that, you know, there's this trainer coming from uh, Africa to come and train us and this and this and this, I, I could see the countenance of the people that they were not impressed, right? Like why would somebody come from, and 95% and, and, and of the audience, they were white people. So I could, I could see, you know, as a speaker, you can read the, the countenance or the facial expressions of people when you climb on stage and all of that. If they're excited to listen to you talk, you, you, you will know. If they, are, if, they are, if they have doubts, if they are thinking, if they are having double-mindedness, you, you will definitely know. So I could read that these guys um, had some level of doubt in their minds about me coming to speak, not just from Africa, but younger than everybody who was sitting in the hall. So, and, uh, and from my end, I, I think I had this unbelief in myself because of course, if, if you ask me, I've spoken in like more than 18 African countries or so, but speaking in Africa is normal because I'm speaking to fellow Africans, fellow black guys here and there, it's okay. But you know, in, in the US it's a different board game, it's uh, they are well, like well to do more richer and they have bigger markets, a lot of things that are not, I'm not used to with a client, with a clientele, I'm used to serving. So from my end, I definitely had um, my own unbelieving attitude that, you know, that I need to conquer. But something happened in that presentation, and this is the purpose of the story, which relates to what I'm about to teach today. Something happened in, 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 the, in the course of my presentation. So when I started teaching, Everybody was just looking at me, right? And I'm just, you know, trying to pay attention. But in about five minutes into my presentation, a white lady, I think she is like in her 50s, she run her own business and all of that home care business. A white lady went into a handbag, picked a pen, picked a notebook, and started taking down notes. This singular action alone changed everything and my attitude and charisma and my confidence in myself from that very moment towards the end. What changed? Okay, if a white person who everybody was already feeling like, you know, what will this guy really offer us and all of that from Africa here and there could, break, could, could give, right? That particular action alone change my attitude towards the presentation. It conquered that unbelieving attitude that I had, that which was hindering my charisma and the style of my presentation, right? And everybody definitely carries some level of unbelieving attitude, which can affect, because it was already affecting me because my, 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 my my state of presentation, the quality of my presentation was not that good, maybe at the beginning. I could sense that, right? Because, you know, the, the way people can accept what you have to share, contribute to how you actually share it is very important, right? So, have that in mind, we all go through unbelieving attitudes, right? There are stages in life that as you keep on rising, there are certain attitudes that if you don't break them down and you don't defeat them or abort them or conquer them, they can hinder the quality of your actions. They can hinder how you face life or a particular situation as a person. Now, let's look at this verse. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. The Bible says, the Bible says, so this I say and solemnly affirm together with the Lord as in his presence that you must no longer live as the unbelieving Gentiles live. You must not keep doing things like unbelieving people do. Now, 
from my experience in providing coaching to business people, there's one thing I have noticed with business people. A businessman who has absolute belief in what he or she is building will always have a higher chance of succeeding in that business. And a business person who is full of double-mindedness or unbelief definitely hardly achieve a certain level of result because your level of unbelief affects your operations and business, affects your level of tenacity and affects your level of commitment. Because your belief system will definitely affect how you wake up every morning and decide to pursue a particular path as far as business and career is concerned, right? So I'm sure we all here can attest that we have um, gone through some time or some period of having this high unbelief in ourselves or in the path that we have chosen. Anybody have gone through that? Leave a message to me if you have gone through that. Or even, even, even now, if you're listening right now, you are going through some level of unbelief. Maybe the path you choose is not going the way you expected. Unbelief starts setting in, right? Uh, or maybe um, you see what others are doing, you start comparing with yourself and unbelief starts setting in. Or maybe your next goal is so big, unbelief starts setting in. Anybody going through that or you have gone through that before, leave me a message in the chat box or a comment on Facebook, definitely on Facebook. Anybody? Anybody going through that? Yes. Have you gone through that or you will go through that or you are you going through that right now? Okay, now let's get in. Let, let's get into the crux of the matters now. Now, let's look at the meaning of unbelief. Now, unbelief in simple terms is like the, the opposite of believing, right? Not to believe someone or something. If you are running a business right now, or if you picked a career and you don't believe that that career can get you to the global scene, that is unbelief, right? And in, 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 in three key statements, for you to believe means that you possess some level of confidence in yourself. You possess some level of confidence in something or in someone. That is why you have confidence in God, confidence in yourself. I always teach about that. There's a concept I teach on have confidence in self, have confidence in God, and have confidence in the path you have chosen. These three dimensions of confidence remains very important. Without confidence in God, confidence in self, and confidence in the path you have chosen, you will always dangle in life. And these, when you lack these three dimensional levels of confidence, it can affect the quality of the life that you produce. But if you have confidence in these three parts, trust me, there is a lot that you can do. Okay? To believe means you possess confidence and confidence in three dimensions. Confidence in God, confidence in yourself, and confidence in the path that you have chosen. Never forget that. Just, just take time right now and do a self-analysis. What do you have absolute confidence in God? Do you have absolute confidence in thyself? And do you have absolute confidence in the path that you have chosen? And you have to have 100% confidence in these three areas. Very important. Okay, number two, you are convinced of something. You have this high level of conviction about that thing or that business, right? Or it also means to have confidence in the truth, confidence in the facts, confidence in data. Like there are people that all they need is data to validate whatever thing that they're doing, right? Like, for example, I provide a lot of um, um, in business investment advisory consulting to different clients with investors and, and entrepreneurs. And th there are certain decisions I cannot make without data. So I need to have confidence in the data that you are presenting to me before I can recommend an investor to invest in your business, right? But you must have some level of, of confidence. Now, to have reliability of something without absolute proof is also confidence. And this is where faith now comes in. Faith is like a, a big brother of confidence. 
You have absolute belief of something without proof. And this is something that we need to have, right? I, I shared a story a few days ago on Facebook that went viral, people reshared. And in, in the story, I was saying that uh, in 2012 or 13, I was having a discussion with a friend and I told him that um, this path I, am choos I have chosen, I am going to build a very successful training and consulting career from Kumbo. For those who are in Cameroon, you know Kumbo is in the far northwest region of Cameroon per se. And now that, that, is, having, that is having a lot of uh, um, reliability on something without proof. Right, what I mean without proof. By that time, I do not have a passport. I've never traveled out of the country. By that time, I have never even been to Yaounde or Douala. Right, I, I was just born in Kumbu, grew in Kumbu, studied in Kumbu. The highest place I went to was in Bamenda, PC. Right, so there's no absolute proof. Maybe it, it, it would have been easier if there were some signs of success. Maybe I come from a well to do family. Uh, maybe I've gone abroad before here and there, but no reliable data or credible facts to prove that. And some of us may be at this particular point right now. You have something that you think that you can achieve, but there is no reliable proof. There is no absolute proof that you know you can make it happen, but you just believe it. You believe that this is possible, right? To have confidence in the assets, assertions of a person, that you can have confidence in God, to be persuaded of the truth or existence of something. It's important to understand this, right? Because when you don't understand these foundational things that drive the the, the, the lifestyle or drive productive living, many people get to live life from the place of guesswork. And I have said it time without number, guesswork does not build an incredible life. Guesswork does not build an incredible career and guesswork can never build an incredible business. You need to intentionally make sure you understand these things and how you can use them now to succeed in life. People that have gone ahead of you, and I always say this, anybody who is doing better than you in any field, anybody who's doing better than you financially impact-wise, they have access to something that you do not have. They have access to knowledge, access to skills, access to tools, access to resources, access to relationships, access to power, which you do not have. And the best way to start bridging the gap to having access to these things is the acquisition of the right knowledge and the deployment of this knowledge. That's why reading is not enough, but reading, processing, understanding, and then deploying what you understood is a lot of power. Are we there? Are, are you following? Are you being challenged? The session today is for me to dig deep into your mindset, dig deep into certain things in your mind. Because until you get it right, trust me, a lot of you, you keep feeling as if you are dangling here and there, right? Good. Are, are you being challenged? Are you getting this? Right? It, it's not going to be a very exciting session, but I'm going to say a lot of deep things that you need to pick up and run with it, apply it. Okay? Good. Are you being challenged? Are, are you picking up something? Good, let's proceed. The meaning of attitudes, right? You need to abort unbelief. So we have seen what it means to be an unbeliever or to be a believer. And of course, many times we use the word believer putting on the of church. No, if you believe in what you're building, you're a believer. You're, if you're running a business right now and you believe in that business, you are a believer, right? Okay, let's look at the meaning of attitude. Attitude is a settled way of thinking. Attitude is like your established way of thinking. Attitude is a way of behaving that is caused by a couple of things. It's caused by how you grew up. It's caused by the kind of friends you have. It's caused by the kind of information you consume. It's caused by the kind of places you go. Attitude, you form attitude. The attitude I have now is not the same attitude 
I had 10 years ago. Same for you. The same attitude you have now, the same way you think now and approach life and behave now is not the same way you were 10 years ago. And that is why one of the most important things that you need to guard in your life is what you consume as far as information is concerned. You need to be very careful with that. Many people are underperforming because of the quality of what they consume, because what you consume now affects your attitude. And there is nobody who will ever produce results beyond the quality of their attitude. You get the concept? So it's, it's good to understand this. That is why I believe that you cannot become without being. You need to be first, then you become. And the being starts with your attitude, with a settled way of thinking. If you have a, settled, a certain way where you think that life is full of a lot of impossibilities and difficulties, you will not always take possibility actions because you don't think and behave in that direction. But if you have the, the attitude that the world is a playground for you and you can actually grow and travel to any continent, and provide services or work in any country you desire, you can actually do that. If you have the attitude that you can build a business that will grow from a local setting and go nationally and become a continental business, why not a global business? You can do it because your actions now start, you start taking actions towards that settled way of thinking, that settled way of behaving, okay? And you only change your attitude by what you consume. That's why any behavior that you develop before you were the age of 16, all that thing, all that good or bad behavior or attitude that you had stemmed from the things that people around you are doing, your mother, your dad, your siblings, your aunties, your uncles, your neighbors, whoever, whatever they were doing contributed to the kind of attitude that you have or that you have been having. And some people have grown up till now and they have not unlearned certain things to learn new things. Right? And, and, and so, and, and that is why a settled way of thinking remains one of your greatest assets. That's a fact about life. Your settled way of thinking greatly influence whatever results you will ever achieve in life. No matter where you are, everybody on the surface of the earth is looking for answers. And only people who have been able to grow in their settled way of thinking and develop a superior way of thinking beyond the society or beyond the average standard that the society has, has produced or, or, or communicated, you will not be able to stand out. I always say something funny. Give me my passport, give me my brain and my laptop. I am off to any country. I have traveled to a different country just with my backpack. As long as my passport is there, my brain is there, I'm good to go. You can always buy a dress from any country you are. Right? The only reason I travel across the world is because they need my way of thinking. Simple. And it takes time to build it. Anyway, the only reason that Dangute has a global brand and a growing company, group of company, is because he has a way of thinking. The only way that you can quote anybody, when I read about people, I try to dig deep to find out their systematic way of looking at life. That is what make people. That is what make people. And we need to be conscious of that. 
And that's why today you need to start aborting some certain way of thinking that is hurting the potentials that you have inside of you. No matter how much God has invested in you, I always say something funny. Even God himself cannot help somebody with a terrible attitude. God is very merciful. God is full of loving kindness. But trust me, God is always frustrated with somebody with a terrible wrong thinking attitude. If that was not the case, I don't think the Bible will be talking about the spirit of sound mind, right? I, I am finishing an article on the seven, on the seven spirits of, uh, of dominance, right? It's from the Bible. It talks about the spirit of sound mind, spirit of power, spirit of love, and other spirits, which you need to embody if you are going to experience a dominating lifestyle in whether I want to become an industry captain, a global titan, a business tycoon, a, 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 a top professional in your industry, whatever I want to do is very possible for you to actually create that. Right? Good. So we're talking about this already. Your attitude is a manner of thinking, a manner of feeling, behaving that reflects a state of mind. A manner of acting, feeling, thinking that shows one's disposition or opinion. What is your disposition about life? What is your opinion about life? What is your opinion about that business that you are really building? What is your opinion about that career that you have chosen? Until you have the right disposition and the right opinion, you will struggle to manifest to the best of your ability. Therefore, do not let others determine what you believe. Be a true seeker of what truth and fact to believe. Now, this is where many people get to mess up. Many people are not true seekers of truth and fact. Right? It's good to listen to other people, but it is better when you listen to people as a seeker and as somebody who determines what is really good to believe. Because if you just consume any kind of information, it's gonna determine who you become. And there are many people confused right now because they listen to everybody, but they are not really seekers of truth and the facts that can change their life. So do not let your family situation and society determine what you believe. Be a true seeker of what truth and facts to believe, right? So because you grew up in a struggling poor family, that is information. But are you really seeking to see if you can beat that and become better? You can beat that and break that stronghold in your family. But you need to be a true seeker. You need to go beyond the information and the data that the society has been supplying to you or your family members and everybody have been feeding you to believe. You need to go beyond that. Until that happens, every action you will ever take will only be determined by what the family fed you and by what the society have been feeding you. So you need to go further and begin to look at what do you need that can contribute to you becoming the full manifestation of what you desire. So we need stamina, we need faith, and the genuine belief in God, ourselves, and future possibilities. I said this earlier already. If you are really talking about having the right belief, you need to believe in three important things. Believe in God, believe in yourself, and believe in your future possibilities. Now, you cannot believe in the present society because it is going to change. 
But when you believe in yourself and the future possibilities that in God, it means you can adapt to what changes are happening. You cannot believe in what your, your, your friend said about you. You cannot believe in what your family member said about you because they are only describing you from where they stand and from their opinion. They are not describing you from where you stand and from what you see or from what you understand. Right? Because you cannot, you, 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 you cannot determine my success from where you stand. You are limited. It's like I was, uh, let me give an example of this with a story. So a friend, a friend was telling me how another friend is trying to back, uh, uh, um, like was backstabbing me and telling lies about me. I was like, oh, I was like okay, that's cool, no problem then. The, the last thing I ever do is have time to fight, you know, which I, I, I was telling their friend that I only fear anybody who has the power to black to backstab me in all the countries where I've done business. Then I'll respect you. We were laughing about it. If you are backstabbing me in Cameroon, okay, that's good. Okay, go to South Africa and backstab me to a client in South Africa. Go to Kenya, go to Bulgaria, go to Go to London and do that. Then I'll respect you. You are just trying to find me in a local quarter in, in, in Douala. So you think, who are you? Right? So you cannot stand from where you are and begin to judge me or begin to determine who I'm going to become. You are very limited to do that. And it's the same for you. Somebody should not sit in their father's house or from their limited way of looking at life and then could name you and then you believe that. Then you have missed. That's why... I, 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 the worst thing, the last thing I can do is sit and begin to cry that somebody called me this kind of names or was trying to do this to me. You cannot sit in your corner and determine me or influence my emotions. You are too small to do that. It should be the same for you. Because that person trying to stop you or that person trying to, 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 to influence people to, to believe that you cannot succeed, the person does not know you doesn't know your full capabilities. The person does not know the people that you know. The person does not know the access to resources that you have. The person does not even know the quality of knowledge and information that you command as a person. They are just trying to conclude on you based on what they see on the outside. You, you get the concept. So it's very important for us to look at life from these dimensions and forget certain things and begin to build stamina, the faith, and the genuine belief in the things that matter, in the people that matter. And in your success equation, the most important people that matter in your success equation is your God and yourself. And the next important element is the future. And the future talks about the next few minutes, the next few hours, the next few weeks, the next few months, the next few years, and of course, the next decade, and the next 100 years, if you exist up to then. Even if you don't, you can build structures and systems that can leave when you are gone, right? Good. So how do you now build this believing attitude that can lead to success? How do you now build this believing attitude that leads to success? Are you learning something? Is, is your, is, I hope I'm shaking something in your belief system, in your heart, in your attitude, in your mind. Are you learning something? Leave me a comment. What have you learned so far? Tell me, what have you picked up so far? Before we go to the how. What have you picked up so far? Yes. Okay. Good. Good, 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 good wisdom that I have picked up there. Yes, anybody else? What have you picked up so far? Okay, good. Let's proceed. And 
look at how to build, because um, I like using the word build or engineering because we all are like, you know, empty canvas when we are born. And whatever our lives become, we are responsible for the building because the purpose is already there. The plans of God are already there, right? The Bible says, before you, we are born or formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And when God knows you, purpose is already there at the same time, right? So your purpose is older than you on earth, to say. And the Bible says, I know the plans I have for you. God is the beginning of all beginnings and the end of all ends. So you're already, your plans are already well uh, um, um, analyzed and, um, and made ready for you, right? And that's why I always say that if you're able to understand how to decode the plans and the purpose and you use it to build your life, you will end up being very successful, okay? Good, now let's look at how do you Build the believing attitude. Never wait. Many people live life waiting, like really. Many people live life doing a lot of waiting. A lot of waiting. But no, people who wait do not manifest results. It is people who build, people who engineer, people who create. People who create until you can create, you cannot really lead a successful life. Okay, so that's being successful involves around action, action words. Let me say so, taking actions in different areas of your life. So it is about building. When if you leave your attitude to chance it is going to end up not helping you in any way. It takes a lot of intentions and a lot of building for you to actually be able to lead a successful life. Number one, believe in God's supernatural abilities to bring his beautiful plans and purposes in your life. This is the first step. If you really are going to change, if you really are going to change, right, your life and the kind of results that you produce, you need to believe that there is a God that has supernatural abilities. And if you submit to him, He's going to make your way prosperous. He's going to favor you. He's going to do things in ways that your human capabilities cannot meet up to. Right? So I have seen the hand of God, you can call the hand of God, the favor of God, the, the grace of God, the mercies of God, the power of God, all of these things, they exist. But of course, these things are only unraveled to people who believe that they exist and begin to seek these things. You understand? So, because you need to understand that you did not make yourself, you did not manufacture yourself, you did not create yourself, right? So there is a creator, there is a manufacturer who has additional abilities and can play a very big role in bringing your beautiful plans and purposes to life. And the first step for you to do that is for you to believe. Without the belief, this cannot be activated. Without the belief, this cannot come to fruition. So it's very important. You have to believe. Like, for example, you cannot enjoy favor if you don't believe. Right? You cannot enjoy favor if you don't believe that there's something called favor. You cannot enjoy um, a supernatural open door if you don't believe that 
No, you serve a God that can supernaturally open the door for you. Yes, there is the place where you need to work hard, you know, be excellent at what you do, you know, succeed and all of that. But there is the favor of God. There is where God just looks at you and trusts you, you know, and, and, and just specially just creates a situation that even you, you will look at it and say, no, this can only be God. This can only be a higher power than myself. Okay, that's possible. Good. Number two, you now need to set realistic and stretching goals. I will emphasize more on stretching goals because nothing will be able to change your attitude like setting goals beyond the attitude that you grew up developing. Okay, so do things that will take you from that old mentality, that old self or that old ways of looking at things and experience a new dimension or experience how things can be done on the other side. Very important. So you need to set not just realistic goals, but stretching goals. Because until there are certain attitudes, there are certain unbelieving attitudes that you will never break them until you experience or until you are stretched from the old self. You get the concept? That is why, let me give you an example. Um, I, I share these two stories a lot because I think they relate a lot to people around us or how we grew up, especially across Africa. Now, there is this gentleman that he had this, you know, this uh, wrong belief system, right? See, nothing holds a man down, a woman down, like the wrong thought pattern, nothing. Like, it's so, it's so, it's so draining. It's so crazy. Now, let me give an example of stretching goals. There's a young guy that, when I was talking to him, I now realized that he had this mindset that he can never, he, he, he's not sure if he can ever enter a plane before. Because he grew up in a poor family and he considered that traveling or entering a plane is for a certain set of people in the society. So it was a, during a coaching session because one thing that I do during a coaching session is I try to unravel the wrong belief systems. Because until you conquer certain belief systems, you, 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 you always feel that if you are rotating in the same location, they are rotating in the same level of life. Are we there? So it is important that you see this from this dimension. So talking with this young man, I now believe that, oh, because I think I said something about, oh, you know, you can do this. What they're doing, I see it going international. The guy was shot. He was like, ah, boss, it's not possible now. It's not possible. How, how would I ever travel into a plane? How would I do that? So when he said that, I started digging deep and I noticed he had this wrong belief system about that it, it takes only a certain kind of people, according to him, to enter a plane and go to another country or do whatever that you can do. So I now told him that, okay, you know what? I'm gonna give you a challenge and you have to do that challenge before our next coaching session. Your next trip that you have to travel either to Yaoundé or to Douala, you have to take the local flight. You will take a local flight. And let me tell you the truth. At first, he was worried. And let me now show you something. He did not know that taking a local flight can be affordable because he did not bother researching because his belief system already defeated him. At that time, taking a local flight was just 35,000 francs. And I said, no, this thing is just 35,000 francs and you're in Cameroon, you don't need a passport. All you need to do is your ID card, pay your ticket and you're good to go. That's how we're looking at me like that. And then he said, so you mean I can just enter a plane like that? I said, yes, you can just enter a plane like that. You see, the wrong belief system already stopped him from even gathering the right information about that particular path. And if he did not conquer that system, he would have never ever be building his career with the long-term dreams that this career can take him international. Because he already had this wrong defeating belief or wrong defeating 
settled way of thinking that it is not possible to enter a plane or to even go near the airport. And then we did that. And that was one of the best things that happened to that guy in 2019. The best thing that happened to him that year was him entering a plane, a local flight. It skyrocketed his goals and his belief system to another dimension. As I'm talking to you, you have been able to go to Abuja and go to Dubai. Just because of one simple stretching goal. You get the concept. One of the things I do a lot is encouraging uh, um, um, people to, to, to go eat in expensive places, right? Like expensive four-star, five-star hotel restaurants. The guys in Yaoundé have asked them to go eat in Hilton Hotel, in the they go eat in, a, in, a, in a Aqua Palace, um, these other guys at Bonaprizo, Bonajo, forgetting the name, right? Just, just go. Well, there are some places you look at just like, no, it is only for this type of people. And when you have that mindset, it defeats you. And number two, there are some types of people that you will never see them in your level. There are some people in the society, if you want to ever mingle with them or have a discussion with them, you need to go and hang out where they hang out. It's just it. There are some people who will grow up and end up in the lower class of the society because they don't stretch goals that can pull them out. And sometimes just one action can pull you out from the wrong place. I always share this story with one of my mentees that I challenged him in Yaoundé to go in a Hilton hotel. And I gave him very clear instructions. Get, them, get some money, go there. And when you get your food, when you, when, you get, when you get their food, normally Hilton does a lot of good face and all of that. When you get their food, don't sit on the table alone. Make sure you sit with somebody. And the first person he sat down with was the Minister of Education from Zambia. And let me tell you something about life and society. There are some places where when rich people see you, they don't bother about your background. Do you know why? They're like, oh, now if you can be here, then you're a big boy, a big girl. Like a rich man particularly told me that. I, I went somewhere and a very wealthy man we started talking. I said, if you're here at this event at your age, then you must be a very influential person. Because one thing about wealthy, powerful, influential people is they're very if there's one thing among their top three things that they guard jealously, it is who they talk to and who they network or affiliate with. So when they see you, that's what the highest people that do background search are wealthy, influential, successful. They don't just talk to you like that. When they talk, they go and Google search you. They go and check you on social media. They go and check you. They, they want to look check you out. The highest people that do background search are wealthy, successful, influential, famous people. Never forget that. Okay? So this, this man turns around and says, ah. So there were mostly very older company executives there. So I came there because I was a consultant, one of the a, a, a wealthy guys. So he invited me there, right? So I could only, only get to that kind of place because I knew somebody who has access to that place. And he now came to we were talking and drinking coffee and he was like, but after two minutes of talking, because as I said earlier, they think a lot. They don't just want to mingle around with any kind of person, right? So the, he now made a statement and said, oh, if, if you are here, it really means you are very influential. Tell me again, what do you do? <laughs> right? It cuts their attention, okay? So you need look at areas. The best way to conquer certain unbelieving patterns in your life is to look at those areas and set stretching goals. Okay, tell me, do you feel that there are some areas that you need to set some stretching goals? Do you feel that? Are there some areas where you think that you need to set some stretching goals? Anybody, do you have areas like that? Which area, tell me, which area? Leave me a comment of the area. Which part of your life do you need to set a stretching goal? 
which part? It could be finances, it could be relationships, it could be, uh, um, you know, career, it could be the, the nature of your business, it could be whatever. Whatever. Good. Go and set them and push yourself beyond those because there are certain things in your life that you will not read and know and they change. You need to act. And on the actions, change the wrong belief system. Never forget that. On the actions, on the certain actions, break certain old patterns in your life. Like you read, like really like building relevant networks. Go and read books. Go and read 1,000 books on building relevant relationships and go and remain in your father's house. You will never meet somebody who can change your life. You're on your own. <laughs> you need to act. Read, then use the knowledge and act on the knowledge. Same for finances, career, anything. Okay? Good. Number three on how to you know, build the right belief or the right attitude that you need to succeed is be intentional about your association for it determines your assimilation. We're already talking about this earlier. Be intentional about your association for it determines your assimilation. Let me tell you, the kind of people you mingle around with will greatly like seriously affect the quality of your belief. If you mingle around people who complain a lot about the state of the country, the state of their lives, and poor life is difficult, and poverty, and they're managing, and here and there, funny, funny things here and there, you will, that's how that thing be building on belief inside of you. Because association determines what you assimilate. Association determines the quality of information that you consume. So you need to be intentional about who you associate with. Very critical. See, there is nothing wrong leaving somebody behind who does not want to grow. And once somebody, I don't apologize with that right when it comes to growth in life because many times people remain stuck people remain stuck with certain people in the society because they don't want people to say no you have made money you have forgotten your friends no nobody forgot you you refuse to grow there are two ways out either your people grow with you or you are grow them you cannot grow down and remain at that level who does that? So do your best to let them follow you and grow up. And if they are not willing to work as hard as they're willing to work hard, you are permitted to outgrow them. Simple. After all, Jesus said, the poor you always have with you. But must you be the one who be poor? <laughs> right? You must not be the one who be poor. Okay? So if either your association is growing with you or you outgrow them, nobody's going to fight you or speak against you, even if they speak against you and so what? Are they paying your bills or are they giving you life? Do your best. I'm not saying you ignore people, but do your best to accommodate people. But don't accommodate people who are burdens to you because people need to also take self-responsibility and be proactive regarding their lives. So either they are growing with you or they are outgrowing you. It's same for you. Either you are growing with that person or that person outgrows you. And tomorrow you say, oh, let me don't make money, forget me. And so what? What were you doing when they kind of making the money? You get a point? Or even if somebody's not even taking you along, what are you doing? Take self-responsibility and grow. But in all, if there's one thing personally I got is who I associate with. That's why I like to differentiate between uh, uh, um, acquaintances, friends, and inner circle. That's why I differentiate people around me, <laughs> right? There are acquaintances, there are friends, and there is the inner circle. 
It's very important. Very, very important in life. And I've learned this, the, 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 the privilege I've had to, 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 to work with guys who have gone ahead in terms of success and, and influence and career and wealth and all of that among their top three most important things in their life. I even know somebody who relationship remains the number one, money is second to him. He guards his relationship with everything inside of him. He always tells me, he told me, Jobert, as long as my relationship with God is intact and my relationship with the right will is okay, I can never be broken. I was watching a documentary by one of the most influential people in Hollywood, and he said, I do not have problems. I have friends. My goodness, that thing hit me like crazy. Do you hear that? He said, I do not have problems. I have friends. And he was explaining how he has never been in trouble. It doesn't mean problems, but no problems come, but he always have the right friend in the right place that can assist him. Many of you have a lot of problems because you have a lot of wrong friends. You have financial problems because you don't have friends that can step in and help you. I always say something, if you are 20 years and above and you have a problem of 200,000 francs, right? And you have five closest friends. You have five closest friends cannot raise that money for you in two minutes, 30 seconds. Without even asking whether, what do you want with the money ETC? Check, there's something wrong with your circle. I am not saying that your friendship should be determined by who has money or not. No, I am saying, what I'm saying is the quality of your person determines the kind of people you attract into your life. This is very important, very, very important. This guy said, I do not have problems, I have friends. I was like, the biggest wisdom I have had today. Many of you will tell me, will you, do you have problems or you have friends? Leave me a comment in the chat box. Tell me, tell me, tell me, leave me a comment. Do you have problems or you have friends? <laughs> When I heard that, I was, I was, I was, I had to re-scrutinize my inner circle again. And it actually made some sense. When he, when he said that, I, I, I went, I went back into my life and I looked at certain problems I had in a few couple of, in the last couple of, like this year. And I saw how in each challenge, a friend was there to help me. I was like, ah, oh, really? Yes. We actually have the friends. We don't have problems. People who have a lot of problems don't have a lot of friends. Leave me a comment, leave me a message in the chat box. Do you have friends or you have problems? I need feedback from you to know you're here, you're getting and you're following and you're, and, and you're learning and you're learning. Do you have friends or you have problems? <laughs> How can you not have money? <laughs> Guys, be active, be active. Let me feel you. Okay. So people say people say that you have both. It means they are dangling between good friends and all of that. Mm -hmm. Good. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna outgrow that. Yeah. And, and this see this this thing hit me so hard. It hit me so hard. He said, "I have friends. I don't have problems." When I analyzed that, oh my goodness, I was so challenged. I was so challenged. And one good thing about that is documentary is another person said, another person said that this guy is always there for him. So he's always there for him also. That's what makes a good friend. Okay. So invest in that, grow in that. Grow, and, and let me tell you, no relationship starts as an inner circle of relationship. Some start as, um, I mean, social media friends. Many of you have had good friends in the community here in the Professional and Entrepreneurs Fellowship. That's how it starts, just being in the same WhatsApp group. And then you notice how somebody communicates. You don't like the way the person talks or the way the person looks at things. 
you guys can start talking from there, which can lead to a better relationship tomorrow. Okay? So it can start from acquaintances to friends in a circle. And when somebody says, I don't have problems, I have friends, I have good guys in my inner circle. I have guys who can stand up for me when I am lost. I always give a funny analogy that there are people who are walking in the valley of the shadow of death and they will remain in that valley of the shadow of death because there's nobody to send forth their hand and remove them from that valley. From that valley. Do you know why? God walks through people. There is no day God will leave heaven to come and help you. God will help you through men. That's why I pity people with horrible attitudes and character towards human beings. You never know who God is helping, who God is using to help you. You never know. If Joseph was a terrible somebody who minimizes people and don't treat people well, the butler would not have recommended him to the king that he interpreted his dream. Association determines assimilation. You have friends. The only place where they call you when they want to go and drink alcohol. Wrong belief system. The only time you guys sit to talk is to gossip about another person. Wrong belief system. The only time that you guys have anything to discuss is to complain how life is hard. While others are talking about ideas on how to create ideas and attract value and attract monetary value and the right people, you're only complaining how life is difficult. Association determines assimilation. So what is it going to be for you? So check. Number four, feed your soul with growth and relevant information. Feed your soul with growth and relevant information. Now, this is very important. You will never break or abort unbelief or, or the wrong attitude with the wrong information. You, you need growth and relevant information for you to abort the wrong belief system that is hurting your career and your business. I spoke about this earlier already. What kind of information or knowledge are you feeding your soul with? Your soul comprises of three different things, your mind, your emotions, and your willpower. That's what is made your soul, your mind, your emotions, and your willpower. These three components make up a man's soul. So are you feeding your mind? Are you building your mental capacity? Because ideation and conceptualization comes from your mental capacity. When that is weak and not functioning at its best, the quality of your unbelief will be very high, which now affects your success. If your emotions are not good, there are people that you talk anyhow, you get angry anyhow. Some of you have lost good relationship that should have led to marriage because of anger issues and, 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 and funny, funny uh, um, emotions that you carry here up and down as if it's a trophy. Some of you lack the willpower. You know what to do, but you don't do it. Procrastination is destroying your life. It's like you have a romantic relationship with procrastination. That's what is happening to you a romantic relationship with procrastination. So when your soul is corrupt, your life will be corrupt. When your mindset is corrupt, when your mental capacity is underperforming or is corrupt, the quality of your result will be corrupt. If your emotional intelligence is weak, 
the quality of your relationships and how you react or even proact to what certain things will struggle. If your willpower is low, if your willpower is, is struggling, your life will be full of projects you have not started or incomplete projects. And like I've always taught you guys, show me somebody whose life is full of incomplete projects and I will show you somebody who will never achieve anything successful in life. It takes completed projects. When you complete many tasks in life, when you combinate them together, they now form success. There is a place of miracles and favor and the supernatural. But before that is happening, you need to do your best. If you have, if you are listening to me right now and your life is full of incomplete tasks, incomplete, you start this, you don't finish. You start that, you don't finish. You start that, you don't finish. In short, you are, you are a serious chief procrastination officer. You have a PhD in procrastination. So you, you, when you, and when you procrastinate task a lot, what happens? You also shift your success. You procrastinate your success years ahead or months ahead. So feed your soul. Guard the kind of content that you consume. Guard who you follow on social media. There are some people you need to block on social media so that their content should not appear on your timeline. There are some people you need to block on WhatsApp status so you don't see what they post on their WhatsApp. There are some platforms you need to avoid, even like TikTok. TikTok is like the mother of immorality and funny, funny stuff. You need to go and block certain people and follow on this certain kind of people to get growth-oriented content. Because your soul will never grow until you feed it, as simple as that. Until you feed your soul, forget about prosperity. Even the Bible says it, may you prosper as your soul prosper. Indirectly, the Bible is saying, may you prosper as your mind prosper. May you prosper as you grow in emotions and may you prosper as you grow in your strong will. Many people always put this scripture wrongly because they, they, don't, they don't take time to break the certain key things in that scripture. It's one, of the, it's one of the most biggest success secrets in the Bible, that particular scripture. Feed your soul with growth and relevant information. Then you're going to achieve a lot as a person. Number five, be intentional to take only constructive and beneficial actions. Be intentional to take only constructive and beneficial actions. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that even though you have the capacity and the choice to do anything you want in life, you know, God will never come to heaven and say, don't do it. God, one thing that God gave us is the power of choice. You decide what to do with your life. But now there is a scripture which says, even though you have the right to do whatever you can do with your life, you are encouraged to do on the things that are constructive and beneficial. So if you are going to rise and succeed and build that incredible attitude that will contribute to your success, you need to be intentional when it comes to the kind of actions that you take. Because you are an adult, and you now live alone and you can do whatever you want does not mean you should do things that would destroy you. It, you should be intentional and take on the constructive actions and beneficial action. When you are about to do something, ask yourself this question, how will this be constructive and beneficial to me today, tomorrow, in the next five years or 10 years? When you start taking constructive and beneficial actions, automatically you start re-engineering your attitude system. 
you start aborting the wrong attitude and you start introducing the right character and the right lifestyle into your life, which automatically now influence the quality of your life or the outcome of the results that you are able to produce. You get a concept? So you need to start taking constructive and beneficial actions. Make a declaration in the chat box in the comment section. Write operation constructive and beneficial actions only. <laughs> I have something that I, I wrote something that I saw in my journal a few years ago. I wrote operation constructive and beneficial actions only. Right? Good. Write in the chat box. Make a declaration to yourself and to the people reading also who hold you accountable five years from now. Who become successful and what happened to you? You know, we, we had a teacher in high, in secondary school. He he always give no. It wasn't in high school. In progressive in Bermuda, it was in high school. In high school in progressive in Bermuda. So the teacher used to give an used to say that some of you here, the way you are living your life, you are not serious. Tomorrow, when you see some of your classmates, the way they are becoming successful and driving big cars, you will now say, "Oh, and that was my classmate." And then I'll be there to ask you, and what were you doing? And where were you? Right? Yeah. And it, that thing I used to say now makes a lot of sense for me now. Right? Yeah. Because, they were like, oh, you know, that my classmate, we used to be together in class. He is now making it in life. What, where were you? Where were you? Okay? Yes. From today, your life is operation, constructive and beneficial actions only. If even you can, in short, put on your status. Put on your status. I said that, I said that Dr. Joy has authorized you that from today, your life is operation, constructive and beneficial actions only. Operation, constructive friends and beneficial friends only. Apart from that, I don't want to catch you in my inbox. <laughs> right? Yes. Go and put it. Make a declaration. See, let me tell you something about life. Life is very rugged. Very rugged. There are certain things in your life that if you don't take a stand, a very clear stand about your life, about certain things, you will remain a mediocre. You will remain an average performer. You will remain in the same level year after year. You need to break out. And for you to break out, you have to be very, very rugged, very, very intentional, and take very firm decisions. OK? Good. Let's proceed and conclude. Replace the attitudes, that's number six. Replace the attitudes that are not serving you with mental attitudes that encourage you to take action and pursue your personal and professional goals without hesitation. So there needs to be some replacement. This is a main point here. You need to replace. Now look at certain attitudes that you need to replace. Look at your life, look at your day, for example. Some people you may need to replace certain hours that you sleep. You sleep like 10 hours every day, whether you are doing a dying competition, I don't understand. So you need to replace some of those things, right? So you look at what, what needs replacement. Maybe you do a lot of social media, you may need to replace that. You may need to replace the kind of discussion you have with your friends or even replace some friends. But you need to replace something. Any attitude that is not serving you to grow, any attitude that is not playing the role of positive pursuit that can lead to professional and personal success without hesitation should be replaced. Because when you don't replace it, it will control you. And when it controls you, you will keep on having the wrong outcomes in life. You will keep on having the wrong results in life. Number seven, have absolute faith 
have absolute faith that the right things will come as a result of your actions. This is where you believe in your future possibilities. When you are taking actions, have absolute faith, have absolute belief that the right things will come. Faith is the things hoped for, the things you don't yet see, but you believe that they will happen. Absolute faith for every action you take today. Have absolute faith that this will happen tomorrow. Like personally for me, there are certain things that I knew. I have this faith. Let, let me not say I, I knew. Let me say I had faith that whether they will happen in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, I had the faith that someday they will happen. I didn't know when, but I had the absolute faith. For many of them, I wrote them down. I wrote them down. But I did not know when they would happen, but I knew, I, I, I only had the faith that, hey, as long as you keep on taking the daily action, you keep on taking the right actions on a daily basis, this goal will come to pass someday. This goal will happen someday. Because when you have the absolute faith, it gives you the courage to keep on going when things are not going the way you expected. Faith in your future is that thing that keeps you going when the money is not coming, especially entrepreneur. You are listening right now, you're an entrepreneur, and your business is not showing like it. What you have in mind and what and the reality now, there are two different things. One thing that will keep you going, that will keep you to that, that, that will inspire you and challenge you to keep on waking up every morning and working on and in that business is the absolute faith that you have in that business that the right result will come tomorrow. Faith does not mean that you are not growing. Faith also means that you learn and you improve. You acquire the right knowledge, wisdom, and skills. You change strategy, you, you change the tactics, but the vision remains the same. What you're looking at achieving remains the same. You need this so you can conquer. Number eight, look for opportunities in every situation, even the bad ones. Yes. This is one of the best ways to develop the right attitude. This is one of the best ways to also abort the wrong attitude. Look for opportunities in every situation, even bad news. When you have this kind of mindset, Number one, first of all, you are even never afraid of difficulties that come your way. Because you have this mindset of no matter what comes my way, the way forward is forward. The biggest bad news should come. Make the decisions, act the way you act, look for opportunities and push forward. You don't shut down the business because you receive one bad news. You don't stop going to school or you stop going to work or start applying for jobs because of back news and there. What is the opportunity in that situation you can pick up? Make the decisions. Discipline more discipline. Let's say you're an entrepreneur, but fine. Like, for example, for entrepreneurs of a business owners of a supervisors or CEOs, for example, a staff messes up. Yes, there can be sanctions and disciplines, but even though that situation went wrong and you're angry, you're feeling sad, look for the opportunity. The opportunity could be that you are going to learn. You're going to write different policies. You're going to learn how to become a better leader. You're going to see opportunities in the market. Whatever you can see, you need to intentionally look for opportunities in every situation. It contributes to the quality of your habit. When you change what you say, you change what you see. When you change what you say, you change what you see. How you talk and maybe practicing declarations play a big role in changing the way you think or the quality of your attitude. You cannot keep speaking. And of course, the Bible has spoken extensively about the power of your words. The power of your words. So you need to improve on what you say. You cannot keep on 
prophesying or declaring the wrong things and saying the wrong things and expect to see a beautiful life. No. Start speaking into existence. Call those things that be not as if they were. Right? That's faith declaration. When you change what you say, you change what you see. Number 10, invest to build your creative abilities and be a contributor. Another thing that changes your attitude is the things that you create. Right? For example, let's say that you want to run a restaurant. The more you spend time cooking, if you're cooking yourself, or trying to produce or cook different types of dishes, play a big role. Play a very big role in how you grow in your attitude. If you're a fashion designer, the more you spend time to create different dresses, it contributes to your attitude. Whatever you do, make sure you create. If you, if you desire to be a writer someday, start writing short articles. The more you create, the more you invest in building the right attitudes towards that particular career. So build your creative abilities and contribution. Be a creator. Create as much as you can. Because when you create, you become good at it. You get used to it. You build your self-confidence and self-esteem. You start seeing that you have the potentials to make it work. And when that happens, you become different. And your attitude or the way you think towards that thing or that path becomes different. Number 11, have the mindset and intentions to spearhead. Now, this is where many people fall behind. For example, for example, after this session now, and I ask a question, and I say time for questions. There are people that will have questions but will not raise up their hand because they don't want to go first. It's attitude problem. It could be fear, it could be funny, funny stuff, whatever that is happening. Right? But you need to be like a lion. You need to always be ahead, be the captain. Command the change in the midst of people, wherever you find yourself, find a way to spearhead. Okay? Be somebody who lead the change. Like I always say, you don't read about boldness and you become bold. You need to go take actions that now contribute to your boldness, to your courage. Okay, so have the mindset and the intentions that you spearhead, you take action. Avoid sitting on the fence, avoid lagging behind. It's not gonna help you in any way. People that lead, people that produce results spearhead by taking the actions when and when it is a time to take those actions, okay? Number 13, earn creativity. Talking about this earlier already, earn creativity. Creativity is not magic and it's your most important asset to win. Creativity is a function of the previous work you put in. Now, many people always feel as if creativity is just sit and it comes. Creativity doesn't mean that you can make music. Yes, that's, that's another part of creativity. Or it doesn't mean that you are very good with colors and all of that. Yes, that's creative art. That's art. Creativity just means that you, are, you, are, you can create stuff, right? And the best way to be creative is for you to put in the work. That's what it means by earn creativity. Put in the work. You're not going to work and be a good writer. Start by writing. If you write, and if you do an article yesterday, 100 words. Today, write 150 words. Today, you become more creative than yesterday. And tomorrow, you become more creative than today. Okay? That's the meaning of creativity is a function of the previous work you put in. You don't remain the same after doing something. 
And the more you do that thing, you become better. You discover ways that are not working and ways that are working. That's why they asked uh, Thomas Edison. They said, you have fed 1,000 plus times. He said, no, I have discovered 1,000 plus times that do not work. So he only became a more creative person by putting in the work. What is that thing that you think that you are not good at? You think that you are not creative at? Go pick up the thing and start doing you don't start climbing the ladder from the top. You start from the bottom. So start earning your creativity today. What is that thing that you have been procrastinating because you feel that you don't have the creativity to do it? Go and start doing the bad version. In entrepreneurship, we always say that if, if, you, if, 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 if as you grow, if you don't feel ashamed of the first product that you ever launch, then you launch late. Every successful entrepreneur always feel ashamed of their first ever product. But they are, it's, 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 it's kind of, they are proud of what they produce, although they are ashamed because, oh, what, what was I thinking to design something like that? No, but that was the part that led you to where you are today. Okay. Who is said I've been procrastinating something because you feel that you don't know how to do it? Anybody? Maybe we're always in this, this boat. Is there something that you have been shifting to do because you feel that you don't have the creativity or you don't know how to do it? Okay. That's a secret, right? Go and start doing it. Go and start doing it. Go and earn your creativity. I cannot lay hands on you and you receive creativity. <laughs> okay? Go and learn the creativity. Go and earn it. Go and start doing it. All right. Number 13, be obsessed with your purpose, your path, and your ability to advance humanity. This is very important in contributing to your purpose. Be obsessed with your purpose. Be obsessed with the path you have chosen and your ability to advance humanity. This is one of the things that personally has contributed to me as a person, to who I've become in the work I do. I am very, for, for 12 years today, I am very obsessed with my purpose. I am very obsessed with my path. I'm, I, I, I was so obsessed and I am still obsessed that I don't have any plan B. I remember telling one of my friends that I will make my millions and create the highest impact from this speaking, training and consulting. There's no plan B. I am not doing any other thing that part three. Every other thing will stem up from that. And of course, we have been able to establish other businesses from this, right? Be obsessed with your purpose. Be obsessed with the path that you have chosen. Be obsessed with your ability to contribute to humanity. Be obsessed that you can bring something to the table. Be obsessed that you can advance humanity. Be obsessed that your path will lead to results. Be obsessed that your purpose is meaningful, is significant, and will enable you to create value for the society. How obsessed are you with your purpose? How obsessed are you with that business you have decided to start? How obsessed are you with that career you have picked? How obsessed are you to contribute in advancing humanity? You are so, so obsessed. You are so, so dedicated. You are so, so committed to it. Day and night, you are so obsessed to make it work. People who are obsessed do not take no for an answer. They find better ways to make it work, but the goal remains the same. People are obsessed, they know that when you start working on your purpose, things will not be perfect. But because you're obsessed and determined to see your purpose manifest, you keep on growing and becoming better until the purpose starts manifesting in the best way it should be manifested. 
entrepreneurs who are obsessed with their business don't know that some people that one thing I rate entrepreneurs is how they change business because they're not making money. That people that in the last two years or three years, they have started like different types of businesses. Different types. They start one, they don't stay there, they change because little money not come and they expected a change. Because the profit not come as they expected they change immediately. And that is not how you run a business. Because if you are really a serious entrepreneur, you understand that a good business will take a couple of months and years for you to break even to now enter profitability. It takes time to have the perfect product. It takes time to discover the right market. It takes time to discover your perfect marketing strategy. It takes time to build the right team. It takes time to understand many things. That's why there, is, there are very, very few businesses that can start immediately and start making profit. It's very, very few. Very few. The rest you will take a couple of months and one of the couple of years before you start enjoying the fruit of the level. But if you are obsessed and determined with the path or the business you have chosen, you will be persistent until you see the results that you're looking for. Conclusion, unbelief and absolute belief cannot manifest at the same time. You've got to choose one unbelief and absolute belief cannot manifest at the same time you cannot be you cannot be full of unbelief and belief at the same time one must give way for the other if you see a life full of unbelief that life will have little or no belief if you see a life full of absolute belief you will see many, little or no unbelief. I'm using the word little because as human beings, as long as we have emotion, there are moments where un little unbelief still steps in. But when you have a lot of absolute belief, you flush it out. You can speak it out. You can declare and the unbelief leaves. You can read a book with data and the unbelief can leave. You, there are things that you can do to pack out the unbelief, pack out the doubt from your life. But no, if you want to go forward in life, you have to choose belief and let unbelief start dying out, begin to flush it out. And we have seen the, how many, uh, 13 different ways that, 13 different things that you can do to actually build the belief that you will need to manifest the success you are looking for in life. All right, everybody, that is it for today. I hope you were blessed and you were challenged and uh, you're gonna make some decisions, right? Relevant information is useless without action. So you have heard the things I have said and I believe that they're important, they are impactful. And um, if you implement them, you will see some changes in your life and career. And this is one of the things I teach in, when it concerns the foundation of life, okay? Because there are many people who are struggling with businesses because of the wrong foundations that they have. There are many people struggling with careers because they have the wrong foundation that they are building upon. Until you start building on the right foundation, your success will be shaky. It will not be stable. There are many people that need to go back to your foundation and begin to abort certain things and introduce new things in your life. All right, questions.